Next, uh, Jim Bellingham will be presenting the call, the next call for proposals. So I think that, that one of the things that we've learned, you know, talking to many of you, uh, both during the seed project effort and, uh, and then following, was that a lot of you had sort of bigger ideas that you wanted to pursue. Um, you know, I think by, by uh, the, the standards of the President's office, uh, the allocation of funds in the seed projects was reasonably large. Um, but if you look at sort of the scale of the type of effort that you can take on in a Department of Defense MURI or a NSF uh, ERC, uh, these large initiatives are initiatives that bring sort of uh, on the order of, uh, you know, $20 million maybe to the table. And those are the kinds of projects that a lot of you sounded like you were talking about. And to make a, a, sh a long story short, what we found was that when we went ahead and did that, when we went ahead and took the lead and created some of those efforts, uh, people signed up. So there was a lot of enthusiasm for participating in them. And so what we wanted to do in the next round of seed funding was enable that and enable folks to, to go after this. I will say that uh, we got a lot of encouragement from our colleagues who worked on the SURPASS project as well. They commented that there were a lot of good uh, AI and assurance topics, or at least a few that were in there, uh, that were exciting, but they didn't make it to the final round. I guess it's hard to, hard to beat a medical project which is going to cure you know, the next pandemic. But, uh, <laughs> But we all think, we all know that what we're working on is important. So, so I don't need to tell you, you know, where we're coming from. There's a whole series of projects here. You've heard um, almost all of them presented here today. And you can probably begin to see the parallels, how many of them would come together in a larger, in a larger framework. And so this is, uh, this is kind of what we've been thinking, what we've been thinking about enabling as well. Now, there's one thing that I want to tell you about before we jump into the seed projects is to give you a little bit of feeling for how things are going on the flagship projects. So just the seed projects were initially designed uh, to be uh, activities that were across both APL and the Whiting School and as well uh, connecting to people uh, uh, on other, other parts of the Johns Hopkins campus. Uh, the flagship projects are kind of balanced against an, invest, an investment in faculty. That investment in faculty largely occurs in the Whiting School, and as a consequence, the flagship projects largely end up spending their money in, uh, 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 in uh, the Applied Physics Lab. Not all of it, but much of it. And what we've come to realize over the last couple of, uh, over the last couple of years is that, uh, well, I've only been here for a little over a year. So what I've learned over the last year, <laughs> as, I've, uh, as I've learned the APL and the Whiting School system is where Whiting School is very much a bottom-up environment, right? Where faculty members are gonna propose and lead projects and we want to enable that and the seed projects are well structured to do that. On the APL side, many of these large efforts really need the buy-in of you know, the, the, larger, uh, the, the larger organization. As a matter of fact, the very structure of the organization kind of separates out um, the business management piece of it from the technical, leader, you know, the technical leadership effort. And so it kind of drives a different model, if you will, of engagement. And so these flagship projects for us turn out to be things that we think that we need to engage with the sector leadership on these as well. So the idea is, is we're gonna sort of do bottom up and top down. Uh, and in the flagship projects, we're actually looking for you all, particularly those of you who are at APL, but those of you who are at Johns Hopkins are certainly uh, encouraged to engage as well, as we begin to sort of think about uh, the second, this, this, this re-envisioning, if you will, of the flagship projects. Now I will say there's a couple of big things that have happened there already. And so one of them is in the upper left-hand corner. So the upper left-hand corner is Ollie. Uh, Ollie was uh, from, uh, why do I always forget the name? Yeah, Local Motors. And Local Motors, so as you probably all know, there's a little bit of a contraction going on, maybe a significant contraction going on in the tech sector. And one of the places that is hitting the hardest is in the, is in the autonomous driving side. So you've seen a number of companies go over, under in that space, usually because they can't get that next round of funding. And uh, Local Motors, it turns out, is one, is one such, uh, one such uh, company. So it turned out that what happened was an investment that was gonna be quite a large investment to buy a couple of the Ollie shuttles turned out to be a lot more reasonable. 
So we have a couple of OLLI shuttles now sitting out at the Applied Physics Laboratory um, together with the, uh, the uh, uh, autonomy package and a, a bit of support effort there. And those are really available to you all as AI, uh, as AI, uh, uh, as IAA, excuse me, <laughs> PIs to engage in, in this larger effort. So it's beginning to become some real sort of, uh, uh, you know, real resources to bring to the table there. The other thing that's going on is in a contraction, there's always sort of opportunities. And one of the opportunities is, is that some of these markets have invested billions of dollars in going after, uh, going after particular technology visions. And what's holding them back is basically the assurance piece of it, right? I mean, this is true in the driving space. The driving space is a very big problem. But it's also true in the aviation world. So Lanier talked at the very first, I think, of the presentation in the day about what you can, you know, the types of things you can do to assure operations of drones uh, in that under 400 foot, you know, airspace. But what happens if you're Boeing, right, and you've been investing, you know, north of a billion dollars in order to buy a series of companies that are electrifying aviation uh, and are going to be putting a lot of aircraft into the airspace that the airspace cannot handle today, right? And the FAA, which was funding this for a while, begins to draw back. So that's just one example of where APL is already working in this space. So these are things where there's actually opportunities for industrial consortia. So the right group of people with the right technologies and vision in this space could probably get a bunch of companies, and there's billions of dollars being invested in this space, and what's holding them back from success in many cases is being able to actually ensure that the airspace is going to be safe when they, hit the, uh, when, when they actually uh, are ready to, ready to fly their aircraft. We heard from Bobby Braun about uh, challenges in space. I think there's some really interesting opportunities there. And the way I would look at it, uh, it uh, is that uh, the space sector wants to win those large flagship space projects. Those are, those are again, you know, to use the B word, those multi-billion dollar projects. If you think of the future space projects, what are they going to depend on? They're going to depend on autonomy. The organization that goes in with the, autonomous, uh, the autonomy that they can demonstrate is going to work, I think is going to be in a very good position to win those projects. So I think there's a real incentive for uh, our, our colleagues in space to collaborate with us if we can bring some really exciting and new ideas about how to think about autonomy in the space environment. In the lower right, I'll just say that uh, John Perkowski wrote this paper, The Six Ds of Creating AI-Enabled Systems. I think one of the things that we, we can learn a lot from is the fact that there's a whole series of AI projects already going on at APL. There's probably over 150 in one sector, I know, alone. Uh, I know uh, they counted, so there's, there's got to be there's got to be many more. I don't know how many are going on in the space sector. And so John kind of looked at sort of what the system engineering framework is for implementing AI in, inside of sort of a larger system. So one of the things that we're going to be doing is working with the sectors to begin to understand, first of all, what is the technical landscape in terms of AI? What are the projects which are making AI investments over at APL? And how, um, uh, and, 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 and how are they doing it? What are best practices? So we start building to, be, to a degree a community of interest. And of course, APL is working higher on the TRL level uh, than, than we are here on the campus side. But these are the people that we are, we, are, we are trying to connect with. And then finally, down in the lower left, we'll just say that we took a bunch of, a bunch of you all uh, and and, uh, uh, and we were there, uh, David Silberberg was leading conversations with, uh, uh, with the Armstrong Institute, and they began to sort of talk about this idea of ambient intelligence in the operating room. And the idea was, was you know, you've got a bunch of humans, they're doing a very complex task. Oh, by the way, the, the person who's running it is also the person who's most heavily loaded in terms of, you know, their functional responsibility in the room. Uh, and they're very good at dealing with these complex data flows, but every once in a while, because they're dealing with so many things, they miss something easy, right? And they end up leaving an instrument behind in the patient, or they, they operate on the wrong side. Wrong side surgery is a thing, and they're terrified of these things. 
And so the, the idea was, was, could you all just sort of build a, an environment that monitored, in effect, uh, you know, what's going on in the room? And before we make those dumb mistakes, you know, kind of tells us. And you can see how it touches on some of the things that we've been talking about in here already, the socially aware robotics. Uh, there's a whole set of things. Uh, and of course, they are very, you know, you don't want it telling you some, uh, the, the, you know, something's wrong uh, when you're right in the middle of doing a very delicate operation. Uh, and there's a right person to talk to and a wrong person to talk to. So it brings a lot of cognitive load issues into it as well. So to us, it was very noticeable. And Tony did really the heavy lifting on this in terms of assembling the team. Uh, and we ended up with, I think, 45. Was it, you know, PIs involved in this? So to us, this is an existence proof that people really want to engage on these problems. Now, of course, that project also ended up uh, having the bridge of the ship being a, uh, an example, uh, an example of, of a, comp uh, a expert team managing a complex situation and then monitoring it. There's a whole story behind that as well, which, which uh, there's, there's wine and food in the back. So, so uh, I can tell, if you're interested, I can, t I can, I can weave that story while we're, uh, while we're in the reception. But the point is, is we know you have good ideas. Uh, and then here, this is just kind of uh, this three-level diagram that, uh, that we went through m many iterations on uh, for, uh, for the NSF ERC, which kind of shows all of the different contributions, right? You know, all the way from the basic research down there in the bottom, all the way to really doing some uh, technology integration at the top. So the opportunity is we're providing resources to develop ideas for, for these large, uh, you know, high impact projects focused on, uh, this is uh, Dean Schlesinger's favorite word, existential uh, challenges of assured autonomy. And by the way, I really like the word as well. And so what will we support? We'll support the formation of teams, the development of research ideas, and the pursuit of these large uh, opportunities. And you know, this, is, uh, this is providing funding support, but it's also helping you uh, connect you to the right people on campus. If you wanna work uh, with industry, uh, do we have industry uh, folks that we can help connect you to? Uh, will JHTV you know, step in? Of course, we've talked to them. Maybe you have an idea on the ethics side. Maybe you're interested in pursuing that side. Maybe it's more appropriate to philanthropic, uh, uh, a philanthropically funded project. Well, those are the types of things that are very hard to go after as an individual PI, but those are the types of things that we could help work with you um, to organize, or organize around. So just to walk through, uh, so 150K is, is sort of the funding level, uh, and I would love to tell you that you could use the money to, far, for example, hire a consultant. Uh, there's a lot of limitations on how this money can be spent. It can't be sent outside of... Uh, the organization, and, and Russ, we'll put this, we'll have this online sometime next week. We have a couple people doing our last, uh, last final vetting of it. But you can see the notifi notification of intent is on the 15th. Um, that's largely because we want both, again, an APL and a, uh, you know, Whiting School. These are probably largely, you know, many of the opportunities here are gonna fall possibly in the Whiting School space, but we'll see how that, that rolls out. Uh, we'll see how that plays out, but we definitely want to make sure there's both organizations are represented in every project, and we know that our, our uh, APL colleagues need uh, you know resources inside their organization to par participate in the proposal running uh, writing. So that's what that December 15 deadline is about: is tell us that you know you tell us just a little bit about it, and then the final proposals go in. Uh, we're talking about January 31. We're talking about January 20 here, I guess, is where we ended up. Uh, and then the start date for the awards is anticipated to be about April. And then what we're hope, what, what our plan is, is that, you know, you're committed um, to, to per pursue this through actually submitting a proposal somewhere and, you know, identifying that opportunity and, and refining that opportunity and starting that engagement is all part of this. So notification of intent to propose. So as we said, you know, December 15, and this will all be in the announcement, um, but, you know, basically identify the lead PI. And that lead PI is going to be the person who is responsible for carrying this through, uh, you know, to the final external uh, proposal. Uh, and, you know, pretty minimal abstract here. We're not looking, we're not looking for a lot in this phase. But as you get into the proposal, 
Now, we, we know to, I'll just point out a couple of things. Uh, we say founding team membership. Uh, we kind of are expecting you to come in with, okay, an, an initial group who are excited about the idea and have kind of defined the idea you want to you wanna solve. Um, but you're probably going to, as a matter of fact, we hope you will say, wait a minute, there's these other group of people who really are, are going to make this a world-class team and this, they're going to make this the unbeatable project. So we don't expect your team to stay a constant size. We kind of expect that you will expand this uh, dur during the project. Um, the other stuff in here I think is kind of the usual thing. You could kind of think of this as a little bit like an NSF, uh, Kara's always saying it's a little bit like an NSF, um, uh, uh, I'm yeah, planning grant, thank you. <laughs> uh, so, so finally, I'll just say that we, AIX is there in the background. You know, there's a big investment that's going to be coming in terms of uh, the AIX foundry. And so another thing to think about of places that we can sort of leverage resources here inside the organization is AIX as well. Of course, this is sort of in earlier stages, but uh, you know, this, is part of, this is part of the fabric that the Whiting School is building to support these enterprises here uh, on campuses. Uh, on camp uh, campuses was the right, plural is the right way to go. And so finally, the, the final comment I think I'll say here is that uh, something which, it's kind of one of these incredibly thankless tasks. Um, so I'm going to say thank you right now uh, to Kara, who has really been driving the collaboration councils, uh, which are started really with APL, uh, but are now migrated to, uh, to the Whiting School as well. And what this involves is that many of you might have encountered this problem, perhaps in the SURPASS projects, uh, I think less in the SEED projects, where there were things that the leadership wanted to have happen, but they ran orthogonal to establish processes, usually at APL, but sometimes in the Whiting School as well. And so what this is, this is what we realized that this was really becoming a big problem with poor Greg Falco. So Greg, uh, who is one of our joint faculty members, was really encountering a lot of challenges in his work, and he actually has been making a lot of connections on the national space side. So we decided we wanted to really solve these problems and solve them in a way which, uh, which was, which was going to benefit the entire community, and we wanted to institutionalize them. And so this collaboration council began to accumulate these problems, and Kara would lead this very large team of basically all the department heads. Uh, Jerry Krill is the lead uh, in the APL side, and they really started thinking through, why are we asking people to do this, and do, can, is there a way to make this easier for the collaboration? So this. This is just to say that in the background, there's a lot of people working to make this easier because we all know um, that it's not necessarily easier. Now on the Whiting School side, Larry Nagahara is really uh, leading, the, uh, leading the effort on the Whiting School side. Uh, and Pete uh, Zender, who many of you probably know, is, uh, is, is uh, op, you know, sort of the chief operator of it, if you will. And we're, we're obviously very engaged. For IAA, this is an existential issue, right? If we're going to be working across APL and, uh, to use the word again, um, APL and the Whiting School campuses and make that easy, we have to, we have to put all those things in place. So here we go. Here, here are people to talk to about this. Uh, you know, those emails are, are on our site. We'll, put, we'll have this posted, uh, you know, next week after we've gone through sort of the final scrub of the document. And maybe at this, this point, I'll just say I'm happy to answer, answer any questions. Uh, or if you want, you can ask me no questions now, go grab a glass of wine, and then trap me before I leave the room. So, <laughs> but yeah, Tony. Ah, yes. Although the funding does. Right, right. Yeah, I think that's true. I mean, with the ERCs, uh, with the MURIs, almost all of these are really looking for, when you go to an external sponsor, they're really looking for a, uh, uh, a multi-university team. And so, and, and so we've been very, uh, uh, you have been very effective in attracting other universities to work with us in this space. So I don't anticipate that'll be a problem. But yeah, thank you, Tony. That's a, that's a, a really important point. I will say with the philanthropic money, that may be a different story if one goes after it. And also with the industry consortia. You know, sometimes those are 
those are pretty complicated if you try to do the multi-university. And all of those are kind of on, on the table. So, so yeah, any, any questions? Okay, well, without further ado, uh, thank you all for a fabulous, uh, a fabulous afternoon. Uh, gosh, uh, you know, Bobby and Ralph got us off to a great start. And uh, I think I'll get off the stage. And at the back of the room there, there's uh, some, some, uh, some great uh, 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 drinks and food. And around the, around the room here, we got some great posters. And look forward to talking with you individually.